Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yumesh Gupta. This is the second part of the debugging series where we are going to take a look at some broken functionality or some broken code. We are going to see how we can use existing tools, uh, technologies or some new tools to fix those issues and come up with a solution. As I always say, debugging is an underrated skill. It is very important for every engineer. People often feel overwhelmed when they see, you know, broken code or uh, when they see unknown code bases. Uh, it's a quality that uh, differentiates between a senior engineer and a junior engineer. So I hope you would be able to learn something new today. With that thought, let's get started. Before we start, I would just like to plug in a very small thing here. As you can see on the screen, there are two URLs, topmate.io slash Yamesh Gupta. This is the URL which you can use to book one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. It could be mock interview, system design, machine coding round. It could be journal catch-ups where we can talk about front-end, live, work, if anything, you know, any topic you like, any guidance you need from my end, uh, those kind of things. Of course, these sessions would be paid as uh, I would be providing you high-quality, uh, you know, experience and uh, sessions. Uh, next link is that if you don't want to book a session, but you would like to support the platform and the channel and my efforts, then you can use devtools.tech slash support. This is the URL where you can find the information about uh, how you can help uh, the channel and the platform through your volunteer work or maybe uh, something like uh, social media promotions or if you want to support financially, then you can check out this link. It takes a lot of time and efforts to maintain the channel uh, and the platform along with my job. So if you want to support, then please check out these links. So let's say we have this app uh, on our production where uh, we can collect uh, user feedback. So the flow is like that uh, once we click on provide feedback, then we get this uh, dialog box where there are uh, multiple questions. A user can answer these questions. And once they do, we collect this data and we send it to server and we store it. And once they click on close and then this is done. Let's say we have built this app and it's live to our users. It's, it has been running for a month or two and it, everything is working fine. Now we work with multiple people, multiple teams, multiple developers. Let's say some other developer comes in and there is a requirement that you have to add a new CTA called talk to support. Uh, and once we click on it, then it would open another dialog box where they can enter the email and uh, submit that. Now this could lead to another flow, something like opening uh, like a Calendly type of a thing where you can book a slot or maybe, you know, just show a, a final message or something of that sort. That's not a concern right now, but the aim is that we have added another uh, flow here. So, so far so good, but uh, Let's say you are paged or your users are complaining or somehow you're notified that uh, once you open the talk to support flow, if you go through that and then you go to provide feedback, then there is this weird CSS issue that earlier it was plain white. Now you're having this red background. If you want, I can show you this again. Wait, so we close it. Let me just refresh. So once we refresh, if I open the provide feedback once, then there is nothing here. But if I open talk to support and close it, then if I open provi provide feedback, then there is this error. And uh, it remains there till all the questions are completed and we close the provide feedback dialog box. So I'll show you one way how we can, you know, debug this issue and find the root cause uh, for this bug. This is our production. So basically this is our master or main branch. So we raise a PR to master, we merge it, you know, we deploy multiple times a day. So how can we find that uh, commit or that bug that introduced this issue and how can we narrow it down? So in today's video, we are going to look at a process which would help us, you know, uh, narrow down our search. So we know that when we click on provide feedback, we get this dialog box and there is this weird CSS issue. So let me inspect it. Let's say we go to this and our first step is that we uh, check the CSS applied. We see that there is a class called question applied here and we see that there is a style tag that is applying uh, a padding of 30 pixels and a background color of red. Okay. 
so and if we click on this style tag then this is uh, part of our head tag there is a style tag here with this CSS so what else we can infer we see that there is app.js and app.css also here so let's see uh, what our app.css is saying so this is the app.css if I try to search the question class here we see that there are three instances uh, question.id question.title and the, again the title required and there is no background color or no padding uh, in this so that means that that uh, style tag is not coming that styling is not coming from our CSS file okay so that uh, it means that something else is introducing this issue something else is introducing this uh, dynamic CSS or injecting this CSS here so this is our uh, code base we can see that uh, here we have this uh, all the app.js x uh, we have all the feedback all the components home and everything here now i'll show you one way which we can use to you know find which commit which pr specifically introduce this issue so what hap what op often happens is that you know we know that we release these uh, the feedback flow one month back and there there has been a lot of merges lot of deployment so far so we need to identify which one which commit introduced this bug so that maybe we can fix it or maybe we can talk to the uh, developer who introduced uh, that commit that what was the thought process what were, what uh, why this regression was uh, you know introduced in the system so we can check our past logs one line so if you see that uh, these are all the past logs and uh, I know that my first working version that was the commit where everything was working fine uh, so if I you know check out to this particular uh, commit if I just check it out to so this is we check out to this particular uh, point of time and if I go to my app now uh, it's refreshed we see that there is no talk to support that means the talk to support was added after this and if we click our provide feedback we see everything is working fine uh, we have uh, all the correct flow so let me uh, go back to our head again get check out so we are at our head so basically we are going to use uh, one tool what one command that is provided to us by git it's called git bisect let me just uh, so let me first show you again all the commits uh, so these are the commits right now all the commits in this repo and let me give you a brief introduction about git bisect we are going to use git bisect and under this we are going to use uh, uh, so some sub commands like git bisect start git uh, bisect uh, good and git bisect uh, bad and git bisect reset so i'll explain uh, based on their use cases when we encounter them so basically what happens is that uh, when we initially will write git bisect start and uh, what happens here is that it will start from our current head and uh, and we will uh, you know use binary search to find the bad commit now bad commit here refers to the point where code stopped working so that we can check what change was introduced in that commit and we can you know rectify the cause here so when we say get bisect start we know that our initial head our main uh, you know current uh, commit is a bad commit so this would be marked as bad and uh, like we saw that our first working iteration was the commit where everything was working fine so let's say this is seventh commit is that one so we'll go to that commit and we'll mark it as good so we'll mark it as good so that means that something happened between uh, these two commits and we have to find that and like I mentioned that uh, this git bisect uh, command will use binary search so let's say it uh, takes uh, this commit 
like a middle point for now i'm just taking randomly and at this commit we'll check is our code working as expected or not let's say if it is working as expected so this is and i mark it as good with the uh, git bisect good that means that something broke between these two points so if it is good then the and when once we mark it as good then it will go in this direction and pick another commit then we'll check that commit is that commit uh, working fine or not and as per the state we'll mark it as good or bad and if we say that this is bad then it will go to in this direction because we know that this is good and this is bad so uh, something you know something went wrong between these two commits so we'll find that commit and we'll check uh, the what was the state what was the working condition if it is bad then we'll mark it as bad and eventually we'll reach the point where we'll find a commit which was bad so this was like a simple gist of it so, so let's check out uh, the working actual working of it uh, right now we are at head so what we can do is we can say git bisect start and we it has started now we will mark uh, it as bad so this is our initial ha head is marked as bad i know that this commit was working fine so i can you know go here git check out and i will you know manually check it out to this sa sha1 which we call so we are now at a first working version and if i go to my demo then everything is working fine all the ui is there then i'll mark it as git bisect good so now it's saying since i've marked this one this particular one as good let me zoom if it's not more again visible then if i have marked this one as good okay so and initially my head was here so that means something went wrong between these two commits so it is it now took the commit uh, work you know it che uh, uh, checked out the repo at uh, add support component usage that means this commit so between the first working version added eslint ignore now we are add support component usage so it is using binary search uh, a lot of people say that DSA is not important or less important on front end. That's okay, but it's good to know, you know, how these uh, binary search or different searches working, just a working knowledge of these things. So right now we are here and it is also showing me that how many steps are left, like how many steps are left to find the actual cul culprit. So if I come here now and if I see my provide feedback, so I am seeing the right version but that was not the case. So let me open talk su to support. It's showing me just a dummy dialog box. I close it. I open my uh, form again, this provide feedback one and everything is working fine. So that means this is a good commit. So what I can do is I can mark it as good. I can say git bisect good. Now it is uh, again between uh, add support component usage uh, and add ESLint ignore it picked up updated form this SHA one and uh, checked out the repo to that particular one so if I come back I'll just refresh if I open talk to support so we get we are now seeing the updated form we close it we see the provide feedback the UI is again correct so that means this is working fine so I can mark it as git bisect good so so now we are at the last step it's saying that the next picked up commit hash is added chat script so that means this one so this is the one uh, this is the last step and we are checked out here so i come back here i'll just refresh it just to be sure i open provide feedback it is working fine for now let me open talk to support and we we are seeing the form i close it i come back to provide feedback see we are seeing the error now so there is this is the error so we know that this is the commit which introduced the bug so we can say that this is the bad one so i'll mark it as bad so it's saying that this was the commit uh, which introduced which was introduced by me i am the culprit here and uh, there was a change to uh, support slash index.js 
x and 16 lines were added so now corresponding to this you know the commit id so maybe you can go to in your you can use git blame or maybe you can see the uh, corresponding pr who was the developer why it was introduced and you can go about uh, you know solving that issue and if we check our support dot jsx in this so if i open support slash index so this is the one so it is using uh, use effect inside the use effect we are loading a script which is chat widget so we are loading a new widget so if i come here if i go to my network tab i maybe filter out it to js so there is this chat widget let me just open this so see this is our chat widget code which was which is getting executed I'm a, let's say this is a production script that that is loading a chat widget and that is you know injecting some styles so this is a very you know convoluted example I just want to show you the bug so the, maybe this is introducing some CSS and that is conflicting with our CSS now solving this could be you know multiple ways you can you know so the, this is a conflict of CSS so you can maybe you use the scoped CSS or something else I'm not going to show you the solution here the idea here is to use this git bisect which I explained to you know use it as a tool to find the bad commits or the uh, PRs that uh, you know that introduce regression and once using git bisect you are done with your debugging process because now we have identified that this particular uh, commit was the culprit we can uh, you know take the debugging process forward and what we can do here is that uh, we can call git bisect reset and this will close out our uh, debugging session our bi uh, git bisect session and it will take our, he uh, our uh, head to the latest commit so this brings end to the video uh, this was fairly a short one where I wanted to show you one particular command and tool uh, to which can help us ease out the process uh, this is one of the you know good practices or one of the debugging techniques that we use at uh, apollo.io where i work and uh, again a plug here that uh, we are actively hiring and aggressively hiring so you can reach out to me if you're looking out for a change or uh, you can go to apollo.io slash careers page uh, i'll mention the link in the description you can definitely apply we have a uh, i think 100 plus team in india and we are actively hiring more so uh, as always if you uh, see any value if, if this was useful to you then please do like share and subscribe share it with your friends family your colleagues in your company everywhere so till next time see you take care bye bye